Welcome to the 10-minute tutorial for research. My name is Matt Snell and I'm a Solutions Architect at AWS. Today we're going to talk about the concepts and best practices that you should consider when creating an AWS account that will be shared with members of your lab. I'll wrap all of this up with a demonstration to show you how to get started. Let's start with some frequently asked questions. First, what is an AWS account? Think of an account as a container for all of your AWS resources. These could be servers, could be data, could be users and groups. You create and manage your resources in your account, and the account provides you with administrative capability for access and then for billing. Commonly, new AWS customers will start with a single account where they can learn to use AWS services and grow from there. This is the scenario that I'll be focusing on today. So can an AWS account be shared? Absolutely, an account can have many different users and they can be managed in an AWS service like Identity and Access Management or IAM. IAM is a web service that helps you to securely control access to your AWS resources. You use IAM to control who is authenticated or signed in and who is authorized or has permissions to use resources inside of your account. Among many other things, IAM provides you with the ability to grant users permission to administer or use resources in your account without having to share credentials in any way. You can also grant different permissions to different people for different resources, so you're able to get very granular. The IAM service is made available to you at no additional charge. If you view this QR code with your smartphone camera, you'll be provided with a link that will offer you an introduction video to IAM. It will highlight a number of the features that IAM provides and will give you links to documentation where you can dive a little bit deeper. So what does a new IAM administrator need to know? Well, first, be aware. This video is here to get you started. Uh, the IAM service delivers a lot of features and provides very fine-grained control over what can be done inside of your AWS account. Not everything is going to fit into this tutorial, so there are resources below uh, that will help you to dive a little bit deeper. Okay. Let's start with best practices. So before driving too far down the road of becoming an IAM administrator, take a moment to review the security and best practices in IAM documentation. I will be touching on some of these practices in this video, but there's more to learn, and these practices really will help you to keep your AWS account and your resources in shape. Credentials. So when you interact with AWS, you specify your AWS security credentials to verify who you are and whether you actually have the permission to access the resources you're requesting. AWS requires different types of security credentials depending on how you want to access AWS services. Today, I'm going to talk about interactive access via the console and a programmatic interface. First, console access. This type of interaction is through your web browser. You'll navigate to aws.amazon.com and then you'll log in with a username and password. Those are your credentials. Then we have programmatic access. With this method, you'll use what we call an access key to make programmatic calls into AWS using the programming language of your choice or tools like the AWS command line interface or AWS tools for PowerShell. Generally, people will balance both console and programmatic access, and this is going to depend a bit on their skill set and their needs. It's important that the people administering the account know how their lab members are going to work with AWS so that they can create the necessary credentials for those people. All right, access to services. So by default, a brand new IAM user has no permissions to do anything inside of an AWS account. Administrators have the responsibility for granting access for users. Now, when it comes to granting people access, we recommend that you follow the standard security advice of granting least privilege or just giving people the permissions required to perform their tasks. To define permissions, you create what's called an IAM policy, and then you apply that policy to individual users or groups of users. Your policies will define permissions regardless of how that user is interacting with AWS, whether it's via the console or programmatically. At the time of this recording, AWS has more than 200 fully featured services providing access to a wide variety of IT requirements. It does take some time and expertise to craft policies that will provide your team with only the permissions they need. So to help, AWS provides managed policies, 
These cover common use cases, such as providing full access to a particular service or enabling job roles like administrators. AWS will keep these policies up to date over time, so that helps to reduce your administrative overhead. Many customers are able to meet their needs using AWS managed policies, but in other cases, you can opt to author them from scratch or use a point and click visual editor in the IAM console. Now, where can you go for more information? IAM, as I've said, is a feature-rich and powerful service. So the QR codes on the screen will take you to other resources and help you dive a bit deeper and learn more about how the service works. Let's now jump into a demo where I can show you how to create some groups, apply permission policies to those groups, and then make users members so that they inherit those permissions. The first thing you'll want to do is log into the AWS Management Console. And from there, you will navigate to the IAM console. Our first step is to create some groups and then align them with policies. So from the dashboard, we'll go over and click on user groups. And the first group I'm going to create is administrators. This will allow me to delegate broad access to AWS, including the ability to manage users via the IAM service. Here I'll attach the AWS managed administrator access policy. This allows me to very easily give administrator access to, to members of my lab. With that done, let's create another group. We'll go ahead and create a power users group. This group will provide members with broad access to AWS services, but will exclude the ability to manage users. Here I'm going to use another managed policy. It's just the power user access policy. And create group. Fantastic. Now that we have a couple of groups, let's go ahead and create some users. The first user that I'll be creating is Alex. Alex is going to be an administrator. Alex will have access to the AWS Management Console and will have an auto-generated pre-expired password, ensuring that a new password is set the first time Alex logs on. Now under permissions, I'm going to add Alex to the administrators group. And note here that you can see the attached administrator access policy that we configured earlier. And then we'll click through a couple of these screens. And on the very last page, you'll see that there's a link that can be used to share with Alex so that they can log directly into AWS. You can also download and share a file with Alex's credentials or opt to send an email to Alex right from the console. At this point, I want to add one more user. We're going to add Pat. Pat's going to be a power user. I will choose many of the same options that I did for Alex, but I'm going to opt to not expire the password. This is because I'll be logging in as Pat in just a moment. Now, Pat will be added to the power users group, and then we'll click through the rest of these screens. Once the account is created, I'm going to copy Pat's password and log in as Pat in a new browser session. And what I'll demonstrate in that session is that Pat does not have access to the IAM service, but is able to use most other AWS services. So now that I'm logged in, I will navigate directly to the IAM console. And what you'll see is a series of messages indicating that Pat is not authorized to use this service. This is what was anticipated. Pat's a power user, not an administrator. So this is good. Now, if Pat navigates to the EC2 console, you'll see that this person has all of the access needed to work with the EC2 service. And that would hold true for many other AWS services, for example, SageMaker. Now I mentioned earlier that it is a best practice to grant least privileged access to AWS accounts. So I'll show you how you can do that now for the EC2 service. I'm going to create a new group and I will call this group EC2 full. I will scroll down and attach another AWS managed policy. This is the Amazon EC2 full access policy. And what this does is sets it up so that any users that I add to this group will have access they need to interact with the EC2 service, but no other AWS services. Many AWS services will have policies such as this that allow you to very easily provision access to them. You can search for them in the AWS documentation, or if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a policy section in the IAM console. You can search for policies directly from there. And that wraps up this tutorial. So some next steps for you to consider. 
Think about how this tutorial might align with your lab and some of the people within it. Review the documentation made available down below, and then get started by creating some groups and users for your own lab. If you come up with any questions, there's an email address on the last slide here, and I just want to thank you for your time.